Today is another huge day. We are going to completely frame out the truck. It's gonna have stuff up there. It's gonna have stuff down here, some stuff in the middle. What do you think about that? I think, I think we can do it. I yeah. think two beers and we can do it. Two beers, let's have eight beers, everybody. I All have right. eight beers. What's the first thing we gotta do today, though? We gotta burn it in. No, we're not burning it in. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, fine, okay, we're gonna measure. So, I don't really know where flat is on this truck. It could be anywhere, right? <laughs> There's nothing flat on here, probably. It could be nowhere, <laughs> is the answer. <laughs> probably nowhere is more right, because yesterday I measured this part of the door, uh, the little latchy thing, I measured the sliders, and I measured the frame on both sides, and none of them equaled each other. It does not surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> me either, if I'm being totally honest. So I think we just have to pick one spot that we think is flat and go with it. So I have decided to use the door sill here. So negative 0.9. So we'll reference that. Now that's set at 0, 0.0. Plus a quarter of a degree. It's plus up like that. Yeah, plus is up like that. Plus 0.3, but then maybe also if you put it here, I bet it's different. No, plus 0.3. 50 thousandths of a degree. That's pretty good. Burn it. You think? This part is pretty important. Hmm. Should we compare it to the fuel cell? No, I think that's angled down. It is. So this should be angled up in comparison, right? Right. Let's see. This should be down by about two degrees. Uh, negative one and a... Wait. If this says negative 1.25 and this is positive 0.25, then this is a degree and a half up from the fuel cell. Yeah. Is that right? That is correct. So I think that's fine, actually, right? I don't know, you're just saying numbers and saying it's fine. <laughs> Wheel every weekend, we're just saying numbers and saying it's fine. What's the point of measuring? What? Okay, can we move on? To what? To burning it in. Oh okay, so we're gonna burn it in, and then we're gonna build the top part, Yeah. right? Yeah. And then we'll probably have to do some kind of structure down to make sure it's all square. Yeah for now, mm -hmm. before we start paneling it. Yeah. And making a plan for that. Yeah. Two beers. That's Two beers. Level. All right. Well, let's stop talking about it and let's be about it. So 60 and an eight, so there. 60 and an eight. Huh. 75 and three quarters ish. 75 and three quarters. All right, I think I better run it. Now that I've decided that this is level, I went through and did a couple welds on this. You can see I did a big no-no here. Do you see all that porosity right there? And so it was really porous from before when I did that tack weld. I can tell now that I've burned it a little bit what it is. It's the three-in-one oil that I use when I'm notching. Um, and instead of cleaning it off, what did I do? Burn it! Yeah. <laughs> I listened to Brittany and I just burned it. So it even came out a little bit on the other side too. You can see here, um, like down there, totally fine. And then up there, right at the corner, as the oil seeps out and heats up, it'll get into the weld. And so even though that weld, it might look totally fine, you look at it and say, oh, that's pretty good. I'll go through and I'll grind that out and I'll redo it. Because that's what separates me from people who know what they're doing. I'm not gonna argue there. <laughs> and they still look beautiful. Let's move on. Are we gonna start basing the roof part of it off of this before we completely burn it in or what? Yeah, I think so. I just did those welds on the outside because they're, that's the easiest spot that's easy to uh, cut off if this isn't square. 
know what I mean? So I'm not gonna weld the parts you can't get a cutoff wheel into yet. So I, I think what we should do is clean up this top part next. Mm -hmm. And then here, since this tube landed first and then this tube landed into it, you can see um, probably grind that down and then fill weld it. I made this back section 58 inches long. I think it's only gonna end up being like 54, but I wanted these to be too long we instead of too short. Yet. Yeah, that's what I figured. So maybe mirror that length up top. Let's measure from right here, that's probably super hot, all the way up to right there where the bottom of the two by two is gonna land, and then we'll cut a piece exactly that height, and we'll put it in at a 90 to this surface here, and try and land it on that. It's not gonna be the same width though, huh? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It is further forward than this one. So this length True. is gonna be Yeah, it'll longer. be longer. So we should maybe make it like 60 and then trim it back to wherever flat is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, shit, I forgot about that already and I was the one who told you that. You didn't tell me that. Yeah, I told you, you that. You just by looking I, I told you. Well, it's my idea now. <laughs> yeah, you can see, so look how the cab goes. It goes kind of straight up and then over and then up. And then what are we gonna do about this part? You gotta cut that flat, but I don't know if we're gonna try and land a piece of two by two to brace it here, or just put a flat plate on there and try and lower the actual height of the platform we're putting all our junk on by two inches. I don't want to like compromise the like integrity of that structure over yeah, a true. couple inches of height for our true. storage. Unless you think that it'll be strong enough to land the flat piece on and then brace it on both sides. Yeah, see, I, I just don't know if it's gonna be strong enough or not. Depends, everything has to be just above the fridge too. So we gotta kinda like we do. frame this out, figure out where the fridge goes. Maybe we should copy this width for the top. This is 32 inches wide. We could just weld the top on at 32 inches wide and then have a perfect rectangle back here. I thought that's what we were doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think you and I need to have a powwow. Yeah, so that we can, uh... yeah me and Brittany, we, we're going to talk about this and then we will get back to you guys, all right? All right, you guys remember that joint that had that big old gap? This is not the right way to fix it. I just did a bunch of welds over it. Um, that's, that's not right. What you should do is like cut it out, do a little plate, weld it in, and do it the right way. But what do we always say? Just, just burn it. <laughs> burn it! You heard it here first, folks. Just burn it. My glasses are fogging up. Aww. I make, Look at that. I make your glasses foggy? It's not you. It's not me? Mm -mm. Who is it? <laughs> is it? Seth, you should probably cool them off. Huh? Jason Momoa? That's what makes your glasses fog up. There ain't a straight man alive that doesn't love Jason Momoa, I'm just saying. If Jason Momoa had meth and tigers, whew, oh, man. he would be unstoppable. That's all I'm saying. All right. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Yeah. Babe, you gotta hold it, remember? Just like you kept yelling at me. Okay. Measured from the top part of this tube to the bottom part of here where we're gonna land this thing on. It's about 38. At the end of this piece, I put one of these little 90 degree framing squares on. There's this piece of square tube and then I marked it at 38 inches right there. So now I'm gonna measure from there to here, and that'll tell us how long that top piece needs to be. 
You know what? These Milwaukee tape measures are so badass because they have a little magnet on them. So all you do is you just stick it to it. Look at how cool that is. It's like my favorite thing. Anyways, here, that's our line. You can see it's almost exactly 60 inches. This probably isn't straight up and down. Um, so I'll cut them to probably 61. That way we have enough room for the notch as well. So this square that we have here is 32 inches wide from outer edge to outer edge. Each side we use two inch square tube, so that's gonna bring it in another four inches total for two inches on both sides, which means the inner dimensions of this is 28 inches. So I'm just kind of assuming that I landed that right in the middle. I don't think that's true, but we'll see. I'm gonna make a mark where the middle of this tube is right now. And then I said earlier that is 18 inches Far, I'm so confused right now. 28 inches to either side, so half of that is 14. So if I measure 14 out, that should be the inner edge. So now we have our inner marks for where this frame is going to go up top. We're just going to copy this exact shape on the bottom and just make it up on top and then frame in this square. And once we're sure that this kind of like rectangle thing off the back is perfectly square, we can just make all our other measurements off it and it's gonna be really easy. So the back section isn't gonna technically be this shape, we're just gonna build everything around it. This is a really easy way to keep everything kind of straight side to side. So you can kind of feel with your hand where the actual tube starts to crush and then that's the uh, beginning of this bend. So we're gonna use that as a reference point for this corner. So I gotta come in and feel it right there. Now I'm gonna take a measurement from there to right here, and I'm gonna do the same on the other side and compare them. They should be the same, honestly, as long as they're within a quarter to a half of an inch, um, I'll call it good. So this side, we got maybe like five and a half. Let's do the other side. So, but, hey, look at that. Do you see that? Five and a half. Holy shit. So this is right. Wow, I'm like pretty impressed with myself right now. Can we take a moment and just everyone be impressed with me? This is good. All right, I gotta get off this thing. I'm gonna fall off this and look, look at this. Do you see how easy it would be to die on this if I just like fell into it or this or that or I could trip over it? This is so dangerous right now. What are we doing? I forgot. You're so dirty. How do you get so dirty? How are you still clean? Because it not work. Think, I don't think he's working enough. Oh, okay. Okay. You okay? You still have your fingers? I don't know how this was my fault, first of all. What were you doing putting your fingers right there at the very end? It's like when you use the hacksaw to come towards your face. There needs to be more beer in the apocalypse. There's beer in the fridge. What kind of beer? Modelo time, fool. Oh, we're on to Modelo. Modelo. I like Modelo. What's wrong with Modelo? It's fine. It's, it's a good, old, reliable beer. We even have orange beer salt here. Discontinued orange oh, beer salt. Okay. Thing. We're about to share a secret with you guys. They don't make this anymore. Check this out. This stuff is so good, specifically the orange. I used to keep them in here, but I guess now I keep razor blades in there instead of beer salt. There's razor blades where the beer salt goes, babe. That doesn't surprise me if you take a look at our bolt bin. What about our bolt bin? That's where Ian likes to keep his shards of glass. Where you have to dig in and fish around for the right bolt. 
I don't even understand it because then you cleaned it up and we had a normal bolt bin and then I went to go find goddamn screws and there's more shards of glass in an entirely separate bin. <laughs> All right, definitely beer time. Where's the salt? You got it? Yeah, I got it, babe. Do you want to open your own? Cause it's nice. Oh my God, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I think so. It's full of metal shavings. What? How did that get there? I can't find the lid. Maybe there's a lid. Maybe there was a problem all along. Wait, there wasn't a lid, was it? No. That's probably why it's full of metal shavings. And put oh the lid God. off the hot water. You know what I right? just remembered? What? Where we found that. Because it was hiding for a while. Where? In a white garbage bag mm -hmm. full of our camping food, some that beer salt, and shards of glass from that blender you tried to buy. That sounds right. <laughs> There's way too much salt on this. Seven and five eighths. So we'll just cut one of these two by twos, 37 and five eighths, and then it can be the back piece. I'll help frame the whole thing up. You tack that. Burn it. In your overland fridge, bring a towel or two and put it on top of all your beer. And that way, the big thing that jacks them up is when you hit a bump and they can bounce up high enough and gain a lot of velocity. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of people think you put the, the towel at the bottom because the bottom beers are the ones getting messed up, but it's the top to fill that empty space. Yeah, you don't want to air gap. Back in the shop again, that was pretty quick. Today, I'm gonna to do a bunch of grinding and welding. I bet you guys have noticed that we can only spend a couple hours at a time on this, and that's because we have real jobs and like other real work that we have to do. So it takes us a while to get projects done, but it is what it is. I'm going to do the number one thing that I tell everybody not to do, and I'm gonna just weld in this structure. What you should do when you're doing a project is leave everything tacked together until the very, very, very last minute, because you never know what's gonna change, may need to move some stuff, it doesn't end up working like you think it should, blah, 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 blah. But I have concerns that this entire structure is going to begin to move on its own. Once I start adding some weight back here, since there isn't a lot of actual structure, need some X's and stuff, it'll get that later. Just with thinner stuff than this, this is actually totally overkill for the top. I should have used like inch and a half, 120 maybe for the top, and then probably only use the thick stuff for the bottom. But it's uh, what I had, so it's what I used. So. Whatever. Anyways, I'm about to break the cardinal rule and just burn it all together. You guys see how anal I am about cleaning this stuff? I'll go in with probably two different wire wheels and then right now I have a bunch of acetone and I'm gonna wipe it all down before I do welds. And that's because you could end up with welds that look like this that might be totally fine on the outside, but if you cut into them a little bit, they'll be porous and weak. Or maybe you won't get the penetration that you wanted because there's some schmoo in there that kind of leaks out into it, especially once it gets hot. You know, it's the inside that matters. There's also some guys that'll go through and because they're not good welders, but they want it to look a certain way, they'll go through and just do a bunch of tack welds. So they'll go like bzz, 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 and you end up with all these little called fish eyes on it. And what happens is it's a really cold joint. You're not properly fusing the material together. And if you build a roll cage like that, 
and you get to tech inspection, they'll take one look at it and tell you to get the hell out. Because uh, honestly, kill somebody if your joints aren't fused properly. So I take roll cages really seriously. This, I'm not taking seriously at all. It means nothing to me. So, all right, let's weld some stuff. Now that I've wire wheeled this joint, there's one last step to actually get rid of all the schmoo that's on there. So I took this acetone, that guy, put a little bit on a paper towel, and I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna wipe down all the spots that I'm gonna be welding. And do you see all the stuff that comes off? So that's even after wire wheeling it, it was actually gonna get into your weld and mess it up. So this is one of the most important steps in welding. I would actually say maybe the most important step is actually good prep work. When I'm doing production welding, what I like to do is with my left hand, I'll wear one of these big like stick welding gloves. So these are a little thicker. Don't, you shouldn't have one with holes in it. But then on my right hand, this is a thinner MIG glove. This is actually from Harbor Freight, but this is like Harbor Freight's, I guess, fancy line of tools. I have a lot of their fancy line of tools and honestly, they're pretty good. Just don't tell anyone with the expensive race trucks, that's what I use. <laughs> so one of the first things I'll do is I'll come through and I'll clip the end of this tip off. You can see you've actually changed the composition of that piece of wire right there. I will make sure that everything's tight because this gun breaks constantly. We'll go over, give it a dip in the old tip dip, tip dip. You don't actually want that much. I will also check how much gas I'm using. Um, 30 CHF is honestly pretty high for MIG inside of a shop because you don't have any like wind blowing or nothing. It's not gonna blow away. I've seen people get away with running as low as like 15. I think 25 is like a good number for me, but when I'm outside, literally, sometimes I'll be cranking that thing up to like 40 just to try and get some gas coverage on welds. I like pretty much refuse to flux core unless we're on the trail. So there's that, got my little bit of tip dip. I'll come through, clip that end, and then start the weld. So you can see what I did here. This is actually a little better weld than that one is, be only because I wanna grind all these completely flat so you won't be able to see them because they're gonna have flat panels on top of them. So a little bit hotter and then a little bit uh, flatter, but still connecting both the shapes is a little better. But you can see, no inclusions, it's pretty normal. What you might think I'm gonna do right now is just go through and I'll do that weld and that weld and all the other ones. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna jump around. So I usually go corner to corner. So I'll weld this one and then I'll probably weld like the opposite side on this one. And then maybe I'll weld the opposite part of that one and then the opposite part of that one. And all I'm trying to do with that is to ensure that anytime you heat and cool a metal, it's going to move a little bit. And you wanna control that movement as much as possible. And one of the best ways you can do that is by randomizing it. What you don't want is all of the heat to be concentrated in one area. Because if I weld this, that, 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 who knows where all these tubes are gonna start pulling. But if I kind of jump around from section to section, you know, it gives you a better chance of actually having everything stay straight. Uh, I won't lie, I'm probably not gonna run an ESAB product ever again because of how disappointed I am in the welder. It's just, it's not reliable. And I probably fix the gun once a week. The gun is held together with JB Weld. The auto set computer failed a week into owning it. But I used to have a Miller 252, big old dinosaur box before they went to inverters, but it got stolen while I was in Iraq. So, womp womp, it is what it is. So, grind all these things flat so you never see them anyways, and fix this. God, that's embarrassing, man. This is the fuel cell we use. This thing is great. It's 32 gallons, it has foam baffling inside, it has a bunch of tip over stuff. So if you do roll the truck, uh, it won't actually leak gas everywhere. This is a fuel level sending unit, and I actually have an ohm resistance modulator that'll make that read on the stock gauge. But you can see, if I could do this again, I would probably make the filler port towards the back so there was more of a flat area up front that I could box in with some aluminum and then kind of put like storage on top. But now that you guys kind of get an idea of how the fuel cell looks, you can see I've taped off this orange section and that's where the fuel cell will go. 
It sticks out like six inches maybe above this orange tape. But from this orange tape line all the way to the back and then coming out to the fender area, that's all going to be a flat section that's storage all the way up to that beam. So this entire area here is storage. I'm pretty stoked about that. What I don't know what to do is there's an area here in between the fuel cell and the fridge. And I'm not really sure what to put there. You could fit around 25 to 30 gallons of water right there, but that's honestly a ton of water for us. And I don't know, you're just never really that long without being by someone's hose you can steal or something. So it's, I gotta come up with something cooler for it. I was thinking even maybe we could put the batteries there, but it's not a really good use of the space. And I think putting the batteries under the fuel cell might actually be the best option for us. I feel like this better illustrates where the fridge is gonna go. You see it, it sinks down below this level of the tube a little bit, but it's gonna pull out a ton. So it'll pull out almost another whole length of the fridge out 36 inches behind it. And the fridge itself is 18 inches. So I'm gonna have to build some kind of skid plate thing for the bottom of it. We used to have the batteries up here and I had a thick quarter inch thick skid plate, super beefy. And you know what, we had it on for a year and it didn't even get a single scratch on it. So now I'm wondering how important is it really? And maybe I can make it out of aluminum. Aluminum shaves a lot of pounds, but it adds a bunch in cost. So typically when I'm building something that's going at the bottom of a truck, I don't really care about adding that much weight because the more weight, lower, the better. That's kind of why I like having uh, such heavy axles is because they keep you planted and almost Velcroed to the rocks and then the cab moves around it. That's one of the reasons I really, really like solid axles in the rocks. Another thing I haven't figured out yet is what to do with this back wall. I'm gonna continue this shape kind of out and it's gonna mirror the exo cage so that the actual doors of the storage area are pretty easy to make and open nice. I need to build something that goes on the back here. This back area is gonna have a tire, but the tire is gonna kind of swing up and out of the way. So that's not a huge concern, but I can't decide if I want this whole back plate. Maybe I want it to flip up and be an awning. Maybe it flips down and it's a table, but then of course there's the fridge that's in the way. This tube doesn't actually exist. It's just a placeholder. So I have the space from this orange line all the way up to that top tube that I'm just not sure what to do with. I feel like there'd be some cool way to make use of it. I could even make a really shallow shelf, even just two inches thick or four inches thick or something. Maybe just a shelf that only comes back to here. You would you know, not even notice it and then fill it full of cooking stuff, but we don't really cook on the trail. We just eat mac and cheese and stuff, which is fine because we're not really out there to cook. We're out there to explore. So I don't know, man. Do you guys have any ideas for it? I got to figure out what to do in between the fridge and the fuel cell. And then I got to figure out what to do with this entire back wall. Do I make it flip up? The fridge is in the way of the bottom of it. So that bottom piece obviously has to move out so that you can pull the fridge out. But what about the top, man? Should I just make it one flat piece? It's so hard to tell. So let me know if you guys have any ideas and thanks for watching the video this far. Uh, there'll be another one coming out next week where, well, let's just say things are gonna get serious here. Oh, if you guys wanna watch any of our other videos, they're gonna be around my head right now and please hit that subscribe button, press that bell for notifications when we come out with dumb stuff. We have a build coming up that's gonna be monumentally stupid. It's gonna make this build look totally normal. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's gonna be a world's first, you guys are gonna dig it. But yeah, see y'all later.